Hey everybody at Pittsburgh Soccer Now, this is Duquesne beat reporter Zachary Weiss talking with a victorious Duquesne men's soccer side, head coach Chase Brooks, and of course, A-10 honoree Nate Dragasich as Duquesne dances into the finals for the first time since 2002. Just, I'm sure you guys are overcome with emotion right now with the win, but also focused on Sunday. Just where are you guys at looking at this win now, having had a couple hours to let it sink in? Yeah, we're, we're excited. Um... You know, it's a great feeling and obviously well-deserved. We're a hard-working group, and these guys have busted their butts um, uh, all season long. I mean, it started in preseason, you know, as we've talked about before, and the adversity that we've overcome this season has just been, been awesome to see. And there's just a lot of belief in the group. So it's, it's fun, and it's, it's, it's a great feeling to be here, and look forward to more to come. Nate, just when everything hit triple zeros and you knew that you guys had made some history, just what was the emotion on that side, just seeing everything that Chase said starting to come to fruition? Uh, personally, just it was, it was more relief, more than excitement, because we I, and I knew that we could get to that this uh, this spot and uh, just have the opportunity to compete for an A-10 championship. But I, I know that we were able to do this and Getting there is just one step of the way, and now we just have to finish off the job on Sunday. For both of you as a unit, just what was the game plan against this roadie team that you guys executed in training, and just how close to the game plan were you guys able to stick to it? I mean, the game plan was to be ourselves. The game plan was to attack. The game plan was to do what we do at home. Um, there was no secret formula necessarily. Um, <clears throat> it was just to be the best versions of ourselves that we could be. And Nate, for you, the goal, obviously, in the 10th, just how much was that a relaxation factor that you guys could continue to attack and be yourselves? It's always nice getting the first goal in the game and just having that, um, just having that one nothing advantage that we know that we can hold and we can, uh, we can just keep going and getting that 2-0 uh, scoreline. We, we just knew we were in the driving seat just to get the win and then yeah, they got the goal, but we held strong and got the 2-1 and just got the win. Chase, for you, obviously, a couple of weeks ago, you had a 2 nothing lead, and that didn't necessarily go the way you guys drew it up. Just how did this team grow from that experience to better defend that lead this time? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's such a wonderful group of guys. They're such hard workers, and, and, and they all um, – there's a love for the game and then a love for learning and trying to grow and trying to be the best versions of themselves that they can be. And I think you saw that, uh, that, that tonight with, with the learning from, from the Dayton game to today. And, you know, and that's what it's all about. You know, none of us are perfect, you know, myself included and, and all the way down through the team, none of us are perfect. We, we all make mistakes, but, but can you learn from those mistakes? Can you grow and can you move forward? And that's what I'm most excited to see is just that growth, um, you know, from, from game one this season to now. For you, Drago, just you saw Chase after the second goal. He was kind of going like this. He wanted you guys to keep that attack going, and obviously there was a little bit of a change in momentum there. Just how did you guys steady yourselves and close that game out? Um, it's, again, it's just that belief that we have in each other and just knowing that everybody on that field is going to give everything they have to get the result that we want and just to keep playing, just to have another game. And so, yeah, it's just that belief that we have in each other. For both of you, you guys have been used to being overlooked, being looked at as underachievers. Just you guys saw a fan base that grew throughout the season as you continue to get positive results and people around the campus are starting to notice what you guys are doing. Just how do you appreciate that support and just how as in whole do you guys value the role of being underdogs? Yeah, it's just something that we take as kind of disrespectful because we know we can uh, we're better than um, what the A-10 preseason standings uh, uh, had us at. And so just going through the season with that chip on our shoulders and um, just showing up to training every day, giving 100% and just going through, grinding out results, getting wins and getting here into the playoffs for the first time in a long time. And just having still that belief that we can make a run in this tournament. And then, yeah, just – just that belief again. Chase, for you, how much was that mentioned? Obviously, preseason poll was talked about 
after the first game we talked about it, but is it something that was just understood, didn't have to be said, or is it something, hey, here's one more dig. By the way, no one thought we could get this far. Let's kick him in the nut, kick him in the tails, kick him in the nuts, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we really haven't talked about the preseason poll really at all this season, um, outside of maybe right in the beginning. Uh, you know, this year was always just about us being being the best that we could be. And, and we, you know, at, at Duquesne, and I think it happens in a lot of sports, you know, that we're, we're overlooked and then, you know, we have something to prove. So I think you can see it in the, our guys and the way they play. They play with that chip on their shoulder. They play with that edge. And, and, and that's what it takes. You know, you need to have that grind and that, that ability to overcome adversity. And, and I think that's what you've, you've seen from us throughout this season. And, and uh, I'm looking forward to showcasing it one more time at least. Nate, for you, just how dangerous is that trait for you all that you have that ability that maybe the expectations are lower, which means the pressure is lower and you guys can shine through a little bit more? Yeah, just, you know, going into games where you know that, you know, no one expects you to get anything from it. It just makes you play that much more, not relaxed, but without the added pressure that is put on to those teams with the, the better seeds and the, the better uh, history. And, you know, it, it just helps again with the playing with that chip on their shoulder that, you know, you can, you can uh, rewrite history and be, be those teams that, that um, is known to win games. And yeah. So. Chase, what do you think it took mentally for this team? Obviously it was a very home driven team in terms of regular season results. What was it that maybe turned that page to make this team more road bound, more road willing, more road ready? It's a good question. I don't know if it's one thing in particular. I don't know if there's one thing that you can point to. Um, you know, we, we've prepped for every game, whether it's home or away, basically the same. Um, I know that if you look at all of our afternoon kickoffs, we're undefeated in afternoon kickoffs all year, even on the road. We, we got a tie at Davidson in an afternoon kickoff, and then we beat Howard in, a, in a, an afternoon kickoff. Uh, obviously, St. Joe's last weekend, and then, and then uh, today's afternoon kickoff as well. Um, so, so I don't know if there is one thing necessarily. I think it's just um, you know the, the group just continuing to believe that that no matter where they are, they can get the result. And, and you know, in talking with you know, you know, I will say that you know, and I was talking with Ryan Landry after the game, and, and he had a good comment, just you know, knowing that you know when we when we went away to Dayton. And we ended up obviously losing that game, but to go away there against a quality side, and they're, they're always quality, you know, whether their record says so or not. Um, and to put three goals on them on the road, I, I think gave us a lot of confidence knowing that going into these next few games that, that we had the ability to, to score no matter where we were. So, so I think that there, you know, potentially a bit of momentum from that, even with the loss, um, knowing that we liked our matchups and, I think all of those things kind of came together to, to create uh, this moment where we are. What would you view that now as the turning point of the season, even though it's late in the season, that ability to kind of have that feeling that you can run the table or was there something maybe more evident earlier on, even as you mentioned in the summer so many times that this was just possible? Yeah, I mean, honestly, for me, and then and, and you can pipe in if you, I mean, for me, the, the turning point was the pick game, to be very honest. I mean, to go into that game, and to come away with the result that we came away with was was humbling and and motivating at all at the same time. And you know, uh, I can't tell you how many hours we spent in the office after that, and the players spent with us in the office going over video and, and hashing things out, and then getting on the same page for those next few games. And then to, to get those to grind out those couple results right in a row against some local rivals as well. I mean. To me, I go all the way back to those moments. That belief has been there, and now I think you're seeing it all come to fruition. And, and um, so, I really do think from the beginning of the season, we've had that belief that we can do it. Um, now we're just proving it. Drago, what did you see? I mean, obviously, you remember that pit game as clear as day. I mean, nothing even has to really be said about that game. But you hear what Chase says about it and the importance of it. Just how do you see that game now, having a chance to reflect on it? Yeah, I mean, just. The, uh, just the rebound off of that game, just having the, just getting into in for film and training every day, just still sticking with what we what we are and what we want to achieve, and just bouncing back from that bad result, and just knowing throughout the season that we could turn it around. How do you both balance? Obviously, Sunday could be very very special. 
how do you balance what could be versus what you guys can just control? So the wonderful thing about this time of year, um, especially coming in as the sixth seed, is literally all of the pressure is on St. Louis. So if, if they don't win this game, I mean, it's, that's everything, right? For them, that's, that's, you know, they are supposed to win. Um, we have literally no pressure on our shoulders at all. We just get to go and have fun. And that's what we've talked about. I mean, even the St. Joe's game, um, you know, last weekend, today's game, just, just have fun and enjoy the moment. I mean, it was, it was cold, but it was snowing. It was like a winter wonderland tonight. We just had a little bit of fun and, and, and worked our butts off and, and, and good things can happen. So going into Sunday, it's the same, same idea. Just, just be ourselves, have fun, enjoy the moment. And when you play like that, you, you take a lot of the pressure off yourself. And then, and again, all the pressure is firmly on Slew's shoulders. So I feel like that's, that's okay for us. Nate, regardless of result, just how special is this season already, regardless of what happens on Sunday? Yeah, you know, it's, I mean, after the game today, I was just thinking back to when I came in as a freshman and just where the program was at at that time. And just, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy what the strides that we've taken as a program and just in, just in these past, what, two, three years and just it's yeah, it's been it's been great. It's just so much fun having this group of group of guys together and just keep competing every day and just having that one more game mentality. And yeah. So. Chase, you've seen the direction of this program tick upward. Just I know you're focused on the championship, but just how excited does that make you for what's to come, whether it's Sunday, potentially beyond and season's future? Yeah, you know, we, we've talked all season long about, um, you know, again, Duquesne hasn't really achieved much in men's soccer at the A-10 level, much less beyond that. Um, so if you want to do something that's never been done before, then you have to do things that have never been done before. And that's been one of our focuses this year, and that, um, that ability to grind, that ability to overcome things, um, you know, that's, that's a foundation that I think that, you know, we've been trying to, to lay down for a while now. And I think you're really starting to see it come to fruition and, and in a very nice way. And, and so I'm super excited with this group because there's a lot of young guys in this group. And yeah, I know we graduate a couple starters, but we got a lot of hungry guys below that. And, and we've got a lot of guys that, that want to come play for this program and, and represent this program. And, and like Dragosich here, they, they just, they, they want to bleed the colors. And then, and he's a perfect and prime example of that. He's just a guy that just, so humble and so hardworking and, and just going to give you everything he's got. And that's what we're looking for guys like that. And, you know, if we can keep finding those guys with that right mentality and, and that believe in where we're going and what we're going to do, then, then this is just the beginning.